This is one of my favorite events of the year because it gives me a moment to recognize some of the brilliant people who built the foundation of what we are today. These innovative cryptologic heroes have made exceptional contributions to the security of our nation and our allies, and have had a lifetime of high achievement in the cryptologic field. Robert Ferner's contemporaries regarded him as among the very best senior cryptanalysts of the 1930s and 1940s. He had expertise in cryptanalysis, cryptography, and machine applications, and he was a dynamic leader. Ferner made major contributions to allied crypt analytic successes and improved America's secure communications as well. In 1936, Ferner became the first junior, junior crypt analyst hired by William Friedman since 1930, and he worked with Frank Rowlett on Japanese diplomatic encryption. Rowlett later noted that while Mr. Small excelled at generating ideas, Ferner made those concepts happen. He was an essential player against Germany's enigma and a prime contributor to Allied ability to read high-level German diplomatic traffic. He taught others about machine cryptanalysis, which was a cutting-edge skill at the time. My father wouldn't discuss the details of what he actually did during the war. He said he had taken an oath never to disclose what the job entailed. I understood what taking an oath meant, but that didn't stop me from nagging him to tell me more. Many of my questions were answered in Brenda's instructive and delightful biography of him. I wish my mother could have read it and attended the ceremony. She would have been so very proud of and happy for him. Richard Dickey George innovated mathematics theory and applications affecting both NSA and the nation in profound ways. <laughs> he was a technical expert developing and applying sophisticated methods to NSA's hardest cybersecurity and SIGINT problems. He was a directorate level technical director and renowned leader. Mr. George wrote over 125 papers with a huge cross section of the information assurance, now cybersecurity and SIGINT crypto mathematics communities. He was a key player in fostering partnership across NSA missions. Now, when I started at NSA, I got to work with some of those faces out there. They're, those were really giants. They were the people that started this agency on its path. Um, it, it, I learned so much from them. It, it was great. Uh, when, I, when I first arrived here, I got to know a, a bunch of really fun people. We had a great time. We worked hard. We had the, we had the best problems to work on. Yun P. Kim delivered expert cryptolinguistic service in Japanese and Korean dialects during World War II, the Korean War, and through the USS Pueblo crisis of 1968. He was the face of U.S. Korean language cryptanalysis for over 20 years. When the Korean War broke out, there were only two Korean linguists in the United States Army, and no one contributed more in the language field than Kim. His translations of North Korean reactions allowed U.S. forces to press their advantage and help save the trapped U.S. 7th Army. He interrogated POWs, advised low-level voice intercept tactical personnel, surveyed an island location for direction-finding purposes, and even worked on Chinese crypto systems. Eunice Russell Wilson Rice was a pioneering U.S. Navy cryptologist who successfully broke Italian and Japanese codes during World War II. She joined the Office of Naval Intelligence as a language analyst in 1935 and four years later became a crypt analyst in the code and cipher section in the Office of Naval Communication. During World War II, Rice led the team working Italian ciphers and codes, then learned enough Japanese on her own to lead the team charged with recovery and analysis of the vital Japanese water transport code. Degrading the Japanese merchant marine was imperative if the Allies were to be successful in isolating Japan from raw materials and to impact the, resupp the resupply of their far-flung maritime empire. She said, after graduation, which was 1934, thanks to my romance languages major and to my father's being a naval officer, which made me a good security risk, I was lucky enough to get a job with naval intelligence. I spent several years at the Latin American desk where my job was to collate naval attache reports and keep up to date the intelligence record on each Central and South American country. My pay of 2600 a year made me the envy of all my friends. 
Then Naval Communications invited me to take their course in cryptanalysis. My father had headed the codes and ciphers section of the Navy during World War I, and he had invented the cipher machine, which the US used throughout the war. It, by the way, she said as a child, I don't know what she proved, as a child, she played with it. Because NSA published an article, or maybe it was the museum published an article saying, what is this machine? And she wrote the author and said, well, I know it. I played with it when I was little, when I was little. This concludes the Cryptologic Hall of Honor Class of 2022 induction ceremony. Thank you all very much for your attention and for supporting this vital heritage program.